Renamari is experiencing an alternative reality produced by an experimental chemical that enables people to experience seamless programmed realities with free will. In this experience, she is reliving a free diving trip with her brother Jared, who is currently in a vegetative state that was caused by a free diving accident. She comes back to this reality in her apartment. She has the chemical dripping from her eye where the drops were administered. Rin sits among many empty vials of the virtual reality inducing chemical. Rin is interviewed by the TDA Drug Administration for approval of the chemical, which is about to be released to the public in six days. Her exemplary education was halted when her brother had his accident and she focused on this technology, co-founding the company developing it. She tells the board it is not a drug but biological software and that they create experiences. The questioner states that Ren's father, who is the leading expert in this tech, is quite vocal about the dangers involved. She visits her brother Jared in hospital and experiments on him with the chemical while recording the results. She is careful not to get caught, knowing that she would probably do time for experimenting on a comatose patient. On her way to the office, she declines a call from her father. By the time she arrives at the other life office, it is all go, getting ready for the launch. Byron Finbar, a programmer, asks Ren if she will test drive and approve some of the experiences that they have coded. The first experience that she tries is a freefall parachute jump and the second hiking and rock climbing. The time in the experience runs magnitude slower than it does in the real world. She approves the experience and has them rendered for general consumption. Next up is a snowboarding experience where she has a blast but as the experience is about to end she loops back to the beginning and relives the day. She knows that this is a problem and when it happens again she is getting concerned. After four days in the experience, the mountains start deforming and she is showing signs of distress in the real world. Byron starts to panic and is looking to administer an emergency medication. Rin snaps out of it before Byron can jab her. She was in for six days and says it was a bad one as if this was not the first loop she has been stuck in. She thinks it is an issue with the code, but Byron thinks there is more to it than just code. Other Lives other co-founder Sam is giving a presentation to a group of investors describing a number of ways that tech can be used from holidays to training, literally adding years onto your life. Ren takes over the presentation while Sam cozies up to a couple in the back who Ren notices are last to leave. Ren tells Sam that they need more staff to debug but Sam says they need a working product to demo for more funding first. She notes he pitched it for long-term usage and being interactive, which goes against their agreed restrictions, and she also asks who the mysterious couple were. Sam says they are a potential lifeline. She leaves and bumps into a waiting Danny, who she forgot she was having lunch with. She apologizes and leaves him there. Later that evening, while working on code, Ren thinks back to the question she got from the Drug Administration chair about her father's criticism that users could potentially disassociate from reality altogether. She impresses Byron by cracking the problem with the snowboarding experience, and more so when she prints and tests it straight away. After the test, Byron sees that Ren is working on some code from her personal hard drive, but she says not to worry when he asks. Danny shows up with a long-term use report that Sam asked for, but Ren is not happy as this goes against their self-imposed restrictions. When Danny and Byron eventually leave the office, she prints up a personal batch of the other life juice. In her personal time, Ren is working on the free dive code that will hopefully bring her brother back from his coma. She is self-testing lots of batches of the chemical and also dosing her brother without anyone's knowledge. She thinks that if she can get the sequence right, it will jerk Jared from his oblivion. That evening, while going over Jared's recordings, Ren gets an email from her father with the consent form to have Jared's life support switched off. She visits her father, Dr. Robert Amari, a university lecturer. He starts off being somewhat cautious of other life. When Rin says that Jared's eye twitched, he dismisses it as being fanciful thinking. He asks about the ongoing glitch, which Rin puts down to bad code, but the doctor says the mind is much more than just code. She says he has to have her consent to flip the switch on Jared, but he says he does not need her consent, but would like her support, and then leaves. Next day at the office, Byron has found that Ren has been printing doses for a personal project. 
Sam is livid that they launch in five days and Ren has been wasting time and resources on a personal project. Sam tells Ren that the mysterious lifeline couple are from the Department of Corrections and they think other life could be used for penal corrections where a prison sentence could be completed in minutes. Hard time but without the time. Ren is vehemently against this, which angers Sam, as she is wasting resources on her pet project, but is against Sam trying to help the company survive to launch. Outside the office, she bumps into Danny, and they go to her place for a bit of... After, Danny tries the snowboard experience, and is blown away, shocked at how real it is. When Ren is distracted and taking a look at her phone, Danny decides to try another shot, so he just digs into Ren's bag and doses himself with a mystery juice. By the time Ren notices, he is convulsing and spasming. When he doesn't come back, Ren calls for an ambulance. Ren is now being held in a government facility, and she's talking with Sam and their lawyer. Ren says that she must have missed something in the code, and unhappy Sam tells her that they are finished as a company after this. Ren is waiting on her fate when she is given an offer from the government. It's a choice between serving 10 to 15 years in prison for unauthorized human testing, drug fraud, and malpractice or doing one year of virtual prison in other life. Ren accuses Sam of planning this and flat out refuses. Sam says to her, it's one minute of her life, then whispers that Danny died and it's a small price for her to pay. Ren agrees to the deal and will serve out her sentence at the other life offices. Byron explains the setup. It's a limited environment. The room will reset daily and the basics will be provided for. Ren questions Byron's coding and the exit routine, but he is soon administering the drops. Rin morphs into her new reality and finds herself in a small room with a tablet device, a meager bed, food, drink, washing supplies, and a huge-ass countdown timer. She does her time, tries to work on a plan to help Jared, and tries to stay fit. On day 365, she is ready to exit the simulation. The screen pulses red and she is about to be released, but then resets back to day one. She freaks out and starts smashing the room up, then collapses exhausted. When she comes alive again, she looks behind the food hatch and finds what she calls an impossible way out, where she can hear the wind swirling. When she escapes the room, she sees that it has been constructed in a warehouse. She follows the power cables into a room that has the food and drink supplies. The next room is a control room that is being used to observe her. The guard is outside on the phone and sees her. She grabs his jacket and runs. The man chases her until she manages to escape in his truck. She heads to the office in her newly acquired DMT security clothing. Nice nod there. And a bit of a clue. The office space has been cleared and after she nicks some new clothes, she sees a Mind Magazine poster with Sam on the cover. The police tell her that she was registered as a missing person a year ago and immigration has her down as living in Italy. There are no records of her being charged with anything either. Ren asks them to come and look at the cell she was being held in, which is no longer there. The police tell her to go home. At Ren's apartment, she is told that she moved out a year ago and her stuff was put in storage. Ren is keen to get the hard drive with her research for Jared. Sam soon arrives and tries to get in the building to get Ren somewhere safe. She is shocked to learn she is not safe and runs from Sam as he is acting creepy. Next, Ren goes to co-worker Cass, who explains that they all thought she exited the business and was sipping vino in Italy. Ren explains that when Danny died, she was given the offer. Cass says, Stop. What? Later that day, Cass brings Danny to meet with Ren. He explains the experience was of being drowned over and over again. He woke up in hospital and they did the launch five days later. Other life went through the roof immediately and is used in many sectors, but prison confinement is a big part of the business. Ren wants to see the code, whereas Danny is telling her to hide out for a while and get a plan together. Ren tells him that her father started this and patented it, but she developed it to help Jared, and that is what they have stolen. Danny helps Ren infiltrate Other Life's huge new office building where they confront Byron. She finds that Byron has her hard drive and research. Byron manages to alert security so Ren gives him a good slug as they flee. 
Bet that felt good. They manage to escape the building and drive out of the city. They make their way to her father's house where he has the original lab and printer. After a night's work, they take in the views and then get it on once again. She has a bit of a hallucinatory moment but is interrupted when her father arrives at the house. He says Sam was acting strange so he knew something was up. After their hellos, they go to the lab where Ren says that Sam and Byron are trying to create an interactive version of the experience which she says will be like a drug. The interactive version was to give Jared a way out of his coma, not for general consumption. Ren prints a new cocktail that she believes will wake Jared and leaves for the hospital. Once again, she decides to test the juice on her comatose brother. There is a glimmer of hope when he partially opens his eyes, but he soon starts convulsing and going into shock. Ren doesn't know what to do and in a panic unplugs his life support, which drops him like a lead balloon. She somewhat oddly lays beside him and watches him into the night. While she is looking at Jared's cadaver, Sam approaches and starts trying to reassure her. She starts getting bleed through from the lab at the office where Byron is trying to get her out of the confinement simulation she is still stuck in. She can hear the government officials angry about the situation and shouting at Sam. She hallucinates walking into the sea and falling through the kaleidoscopic gateway to reality. Arriving back in reality reality, she gives a relieved Sam a belting left hook. According to the screen she has been in for 371 days, she is pissed and tries to destroy the laptop with her recorded data. She takes a moment to rest and assess the experience and thinks back to the drug administration interview where they approved the other life tech. She speaks with Sam and tells him she is splitting with the company and taking the patent with her, saying that Danny died. Sam is visibly upset as she leaves. After Danny's cremation, she contacts her father, who has learned and is sickened by Sam's confinement plans. She agrees that they need to go to the hospital and let Jared go. Sam calls and insists that she goes to the office to see something in person. Wow, that sounds ominous. The office is being packed away. Byron and Sam say that she had a rush when she broke out of the cell, which means she was interactive and they need to record her again. Rin is not interested in selling interactive or going in again, but Sam thinks it will save the company. An increasingly desperate Sam tries to convince her, but in the end, doses her against her will, sending her back to confinement. She is pissed at first, but starts to hack the code from inside the simulation and runs the days down. Before long, she is coming to and attacks Sam, wiping the juice into his eye. Sam is now screaming in the box. They hook him up and record, but Byron insists that he will die and she must jab him to get him out, but she cleverly waits until he experiences the disappointment of the 365-day reset, then wakes him. He is a total wreck. Finally, she meets with her father and comforts him as they let Jared go into the unknown. I wonder if she thought Jared was experiencing a type of confinement. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Stay frosty till next time. Peace out.